Yes, it's Monday, and you know what that means, don't you? We're going to talk about ghosts. Of course we are, and we've got loads of good ghosty stuff. Greetings from me in Labyrinth Town. Oh, basically, um, I've got labyrinthitis. If you don't know what it is, count yourself very lucky, because it's an inner ear infection that makes you feel like you're drunk all the time. Now, I know what you're thinking, that sounds very good. But it's not when you've just moved house and you need to drive and paint and things. And you can do none of those things. You can barely walk in a straight line without bouncing off a wall. I was absolutely terrified over the weekend. I rung 111, which is like the emergency uh, NHS sort of thing. And I said, listen, think I'm having a stroke. And they were like, oh, okay, Um, maybe you should see a doctor. So I did. And they said, it's not a stroke. Don't be silly. And then, interestingly, though, they say, we think it's labyrinthitis. It's like vertigo all the time. It's dead nice. Um, if it doesn't go, here's some pills, which is like travel sickness pills. It's an- antihistamines they are. And if it's still there in five days, make an urgent appointment with your GP in case it's something nasty. Anyway, let's hope it's not that. I'm sure it's not. We've done all the tests, like touching stuff. And hysterically, she went, um, she held her finger out and went, okay, I want you to do this. And she touched her nose and her finger. And before she finished, I touched my nose and her finger. And she was like, no, your own finger. I was like, oh. Um, but she went, but the good thing is that proves that it's probably not anything really dangerous so let's hope it goes anyway we shall always have ghosts on a monday for that's how things work so if i get a bit wobbly and ropey during this one forgive me it shouldn't be seen or heard by you because i'll edit it all out but um hopefully everything's okay so shall we move on what have we got today for you well we have of course your wonderful ghost stories which i'm going to read out we also have a paranormal review and it's big thanks to brennan from the ghost story guys for this because he tweeted that he just watched this found footage irish film and one afternoon i was like i want to watch something so i'm gonna find it and i could only get it on apple tv and it was like a few quid to rent but i watched it and you're gonna hear what i thought about it and of course we're not gonna have becca sadly on Becca's Reddit corner because she's, as we speak, she's on a train to an exhibition for her work. And yeah, she wouldn't really appreciate it if I rung her and said, do you want to talk about ghosts? I might ring her and ask if she wants to talk about ghosts, but we'll see. So yeah, that's how it goes. And also, before we do any of that, I of course need to thank our newest Patreons. When you sign up to Patreon, not only do you support the show, you also get two extra shows each and every week. Spoiler, there was only one this week because I was in the Doctors. But you do get normally two shows each and every week. One which is a ramble where I just say the things which are on my brain. And two, the second one is a paranormal show. Yes. So you need to go over to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. And when you do so, as an additional bonus, I also sing your name as a thank you. The guitar is well and truly out. And we have wonderful new patrons to say thank you. Two, in the guise of Deborah Ware, Ryan Rolls, Susan Burkholz, Irish Wristwatch, try and say that when you've got labyrinthitis, and Chris Wright. This is for you. Deborah Ware, Ryan Rolls, and Susan Burke, ha 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 and Irish Wristwatch. And good old Chris Wright I want to say thank you to you You have signed up to the Patron You're gonna get all the extra shows Thank you oh so much Much Ugh Ran out of breath there. Sorry, everyone. And falsettos and sevenths all the way. Thank you, guys. Don't forget, if you want to sign up and me sing your name, go over to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. Now, let's have a paranormal review, shall we? Okay, it's time for the paranormal review. Let's say it in unison, where I review so you don't have to. And let's say this part in unison, that makes no sense. Anyway, today's review is about a film. Yes, we're doing a film this week. And I found this film because I was scouring through Twitter, as you do when you've got nothing to do at one in the morning. And I seen that Brennan from Ghost Story Guys had been talking about a film he watched, which he liked, which was called The Devil's Doorway. But he also talked about how difficult it was to find. And I thought, well, I want to watch this film now, and I'm going to try and find it. Turns out it's not on Amazon. It's not on Netflix. It is on Apple TV, and it was a couple of quid. I think I paid maybe... $3.99, $4.99 to rent it. Anyway, it's called The Devil's Doorway. And it's a found footage film. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to go, who likes found footage films these days? But it's done very well, I think. And it's an Irish film. Um, 
I think it's Northern Irish, I think. And I should know that, shouldn't I? I think it's Northern Irish, pretty sure. I'm not 100%. I should know that because I watched the bloody thing. Anyway, it's done really well. It follow, It's set in the 60s and it follows these two priests as they go to one of the Magdalene laundries. And um, yeah, and basically say there's there's been an alleged miracle of a crying statue of the Blessed Virgin. And they go in and say, can we see it? And there's an old priest and he doesn't, yes, an old and a young priest. And the old priest doesn't believe in anything. Doesn't really seem to believe in God that much, to be honest. And the young priest is kind of like very eager and he's got this like big old camcorder. And yeah, I won't say any more than that because there, there would be spoilers. You know what I'm like? But I would say go and watch it. I think it was dead good, to be fair. It's only short too. I've got this thing about like 90 minute films. I will watch anything under 90 minutes. Over 90 minutes, I'm a bit like, oh my God, could you not have done it in 90 minutes? And nine times out of 10, they could have. But I would say go and watch this film if you can get it. The Devil's Doorway, it's two thumbs up from me. Go and give it a watch. Okay, before we jump into your paranormal tales, and we've got a Belton one this week, I promise you we do. I just want to give a quick shout out to Lucy. Lucy White's been a big friend of the show for ages. And when we used to do Week and Weird, she used to send us a load of scary news stories. And occasionally she still does. And I feel they're bad because we've got nowhere to put them. But I do want to share this one that she sent over. You may well have seen this and I think it's great and terrifying and slightly prophetic, don't you think? You might have seen this. It's an ancient Japanese killing stone said to contain an evil demon that's been split apart, sending superstitious believers into a state of panic. So the stone itself is located in the mountainous region of Tokiji, north of Tokyo, Japan. According to mythology, it contains the transformed corpse of Tanamo no Mei. Her true identity was said to be an evil nine-tailed fox embedded in the stone. The stone split in two parts and was discovered by tourists over the weekend. Interesting. Legend has it that Tanamo no Mei was part of a plot to kill Emperor Toba, who ruled Japan from 1107 to 1123. The spirit was then said to have embedded into the stone where it would kill anyone who came into contact with it. Ow! Don't know. Oh yeah, she's a fox. That was a wolf. I feel like I've seen something that I shouldn't have seen, said one tourist who tweeted about the discovery. Another feared the release of an evil demon was just the latest horror of 2022, while one user joked that the spirit would want to spend another millennium stuck inside the rock after the current state of the world. However, how fitting it may be in 2022 to say, of course it's a demon, fucking hell, the world's going to pot. It appears it's just rainwater that's caused the split of this natural geographical rock formation thing, and not a deity with nine tails saying, ha ha, pandemics and war in Ukraine, I may as well come out for a party. It's not that. So yeah, thank you very much, Lucy, for sending in these snippets. Please continue to do so. I apologise if we won't be able to get them on every show, but some of them, you know, are really good and interesting and spooky like this one. Now, brace yourself, we've had an amazing email sent to us, and I'm going to read it out today, because that's the point of the show, but also because it's great. This is coming from Presley in the US. This is indeed a triple T, a totally terrifying tale, and this is Presley's email. The house I grew up in was haunted. We moved out of the house I lived in as a small child when I was five, and into a bigger house that better suited my parents, my two older siblings, and myself, plus a few pets. We settled into the house quickly and began our family routines of school, work, play and everything in between. I don't know who noticed first something was off or who was the first to speak up, but things began to get strange not long into our stay in this house and continued throughout our time there, about six years. At first, I was very excited by the prospect of having a basement, a real basement in our house. It seemed like a luxury. My brother, being in his teens, claimed the finished basement as his room immediately. I very quickly became relieved that it was all but off-limits to me, as I always felt weird when near the basement, even just standing at the top of the stairs. I got a weird tingling at the back of my neck when I had to be near it, and dreaded being told to go and get my brother for dinner, or being asked by him to go and get something from his room. It was always cold, and always the kind of silent that hurt your ears. The first outside indication that something was strange was when a friend of my mum's came by to see the new house. She was very new agey and into different kinds of mysticism. Upon entering our house, and specifically the basement, 
She said she had a very bad feeling about the place, but wouldn't expand any further. It began for me with little flits in the corner of my eye. I would be playing or reading, and I would catch movement just out of my line of sight, but it was always gone when I turned to look. I didn't like being alone in the house, but I often didn't have a choice, as my brother was much older and my sister wasn't always keen to play with her annoying younger sister. The first escalation I remember occurred when I was sitting in my room, having a tea party for some stuffed animals. My back was to my door, and I was playing away when my light suddenly turned off. I assumed it was my sister, so I shouted for her to come back in and turn it on, that it wasn't funny. I yelled for her a couple of times, but she didn't answer. I eventually got up and turned the light back on, and went in search of her to confront her but she was nowhere to be found in the house. She was in the backyard, playing with our dog. The next significant thing that happened was when I was reading in bed one night and caught out of the corner of my eye what appeared to be someone poking their head around the corner to look back at me. I looked up expecting to see my dad because the silhouette was high on the doorframe. Instead, I saw a black shadow quickly move out of my eye line. I was pretty spooked and slept with my lamp on that night. Another night, I was in bed while my brother and parents were still up and around, and I was half asleep. I sensed someone come into my room and my bed was roughly jolted. I started fully awake, assuming my brother had come in to play some sort of prank, but no one was there. On a different night... I was laying in bed trying to fall asleep, which had become a problem, as I was frequently afraid to keep the light off and often asked my sister if I could stay in her room. I felt our family cat jump onto the foot of my bed and make her way up towards me, which wasn't uncommon. I opened my eyes to coax her further up to lay with me, only to see no cat on my bed or in my room. My sister would frequently hear her name getting called and would go to my mum, asking what she needed, only to have her say that she hadn't called for her. She frequently saw shadow figures moving just outside of her vision or darting around corners. In one instance, my sister was walking past the front door and saw a little boy standing on our porch, just looking in. When she turned around to see what he wanted, he vanished. My father had an encounter with something or someone one day when he was working on some plumbing in the bathroom. He was underneath the sink but felt someone walk up to the bathroom doorway and stand there. He assumed it was my mum, so he finished what he was doing and started to get himself up and out of the way of the vanity. When he caught a glimpse of the doorway, he saw a woman that was very clearly not my mother. In an old-fashioned red dress who simply turned and walked away. One weekend we went out of town and a friend of my brother's in his late teens offered to house sit for us as he lived in a crowded house and looked forward to some quiet time. We'd left Friday afternoon and came home Sunday evening and he'd already left. When we spoke to him later to see how things had gone there was some confusion as he mentioned that we had gotten back so late on Saturday night My mum corrected him and said we had gotten back later in the evening on Sunday. He thought we were messing with him and explained that he had seen what he thought was me, I was eight or nine at the time, standing in the doorway of our den for some time last night when he'd woken up on the couch. He said that a child-sized figure stood silhouetted against the lights coming from the living room and seemed to stare at him for what must have been a few minutes before walking away. He never stayed at our house again. These last few encounters are arguably the most strange and unsettling. Late one night, we were all in bed asleep, and there was a sudden huge crash that woke all of us up. My sister and I ran into the hallway, where my parents met us and told us to stay in our rooms whilst they went to check it out. We waited in silence, shaken from having been woken up so abruptly. After some time, our parents still hadn't returned, so we decided to go down the hall toward the kitchen. We found our mum and dad standing in the kitchen, 
staring at absolute chaos. Every single cabinet in our kitchen had fallen from the walls and ceiling at the same time, leaving the cabinet and everything in them completely destroyed. One afternoon, my mum and a friend of hers were returning to our house after a day of shopping. The rest of us were at work or school at the time. When my mum's friend dropped her off, she asked her to come inside and see the new tiles we'd had put up in the bathroom. My mum thought that was kind of odd, as she'd previously shown her friend the recent renovations she and my father had done, but she obliged. Her friend then asked to see things in other areas throughout the house, in bedrooms, living areas, the kitchen, etc. Eventually, they'd made their way through the whole house, and finally, her friend started to take her leave. She hesitated as she left and seemed unsure of whether or not to say what came next. She told my mum that as they pulled in the driveway, she had seen the blinds in the front bedroom pulled down, as if someone was looking through them, and then snapped back as if let go. She walked through the whole house with my mum to ensure there were no intruders, but was obviously still unsettled by the alternative. This is one of the last incidents we experienced in this house. One afternoon, my mum and I were arriving home from picking me up at school. My siblings had after-school activities and my dad worked until later in the evening, so it was just us that day. Walking up to the front door, we realised something was wrong. The front door was kicked in, and as my mum walked in the door, the intruder was running out of the back door. We immediately went back to the car and called the cops, who arrived a short time later. They walked through the house, double-checking that no one was still inside and assessing the damage. An officer came to my mum to ask for additional info regarding items and timeline. He seemed specifically focused on whether or not anyone was home and asked my mum several times to confirm this. My mum assured him that no one had been home all day. He paused and seemed to mull over his next sentence carefully. He said that he'd been doing this a long time and that due to the state of the front door, he would have bet anything that someone had been inside trying to hold the door shut against the intruder. Whatever was in this house growing up wasn't necessarily benign or malicious. Clearly a bit of a troublemaker, but never directly threatening to me or anyone in my family. It was definitely an interesting experience, though not something I'd like to go through again. Presley. Oh my God, Presley, that's amazing. I mean, the thing at the end there where you say that possibly this nice ghost now, turns out it's a nice one, is trying to keep an intruder out by pushing the door back. That intruder, you know, imagine being the intruder. Let me in, let me in, little pig. And then you burst in, you go, ha ha, where the fuck, who was doing that? Maybe you just ran in and ran out. I wonder if he actually stole anything or if he was like, fuck this, and just ran off. That's what I'd do if I was a thief and encountered the paranormal. Oh, my God. Seriously, though, Presley, keep us updated in case there's any more tales from your parents or anything else regarding the house, because that is terrifying. Oh, my Lord. Thank you so much for sending that in. Now, guys, don't forget, this show only exists because you send in ghost stories. So if you're sitting on a ghost story and you think, oh, I should maybe should send that in, should I? Hmm, I don't know. Rub my chin do send it in. Contact at talkaboutghosts.com and then I read it out and that's how we do it. Anyway, it's normally about this point in proceedings where we head over to Becca's Reddit corner and what we're going to do, we're going to still go there. In fact, what we'll do, we'll go there and then we'll ring her from there to say that we're in there and see what she says and then I'll read something from Reddit when she's gone. How about that? Yay, let's try that. Let's go and sneak in that corner. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time for Paranormal Reddit Corner with Becca. Hello, are you okay? Yeah, you. Yeah, um, are you on the train? Yes. I'm, you're on the podcast? What? <laughs> you really ought to tell me these things. I know, I really should, I'm sorry. I'm actually live on the podcast now, I had no idea, yeah. Well, you're not live, live, who are you talking to? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Business. Oh, yeah. Have you made mates on the train? <laughs> no, we're travelling with Emma on Oh, yeah, of course. So it's Becca's Reddit Corner, but you're not here. You want to send me a link? 
No. <laughs> oh, bless you. Bless you, Becca. I can read it on the show. I might entertain people on the stream as well, if you like. No, I wouldn't do Even I wouldn't do that to you. I thought what I'd do, if you're okay with it, I'd, I'd read the story to you and you can tell me. You Instead, you can look like you're a proper weirdo on the oh, train. Oh, no, this is worse. This is so much worse. Because you could be like, well, have oh. you ever thought about smudging? <laughs> much worse i really really don't want you to read those stories to me i really don't want that i can't tell you how much i don't want that yeah you do stop showing off in front of your mates yeah you do <laughs> i really don't can i read one to you shall i find a reddit one right i'll tell you what i'll tell you what I'll, I'll pause it here and then i'll ring you back i'll send you a link and then i'll ring you back i look forward to it yeah thanks Tee-hee-hee. okay bye, bye. Hooray. So I can't believe she's actually up for doing this. Little legend. All right. So I'm going to f- just send this link and then we'll call her back. Hello. Hello. Um, did you get my message, the screenshot? Yes. Thank you. Um, I don't think you quite thought that through because I obviously can't read it at the same time as being on the phone to you. But fortunately for you, I have two phones. So I've forwarded it to my other phone. Aren't you clever? See, it's this sort of resourcefulness is why you're on your way to a conference and I'm sat here sending you WhatsApps of Reddit posts. <laughs> um, go on then, Beck. Freak, go on, freak everyone out on the train with this amazing story. And I hope people think this is you asking me for advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, hope, I hope that's so. Okay, so welcome to Reddit Corner with Becca. Oh, I can't believe you've done that on a train, you weirdo. That's boss. Well done. This story is titled, We Have a Poltergeist Problem and I Need Help. Yes, you do. Let's begin. It started last summer. Small things, loud bangs in the night, like someone dropped a sack of potatoes or bricks in the dining room. We dart out in the dark thinking it was the cat. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, where would the cat have a sack of potatoes? Right, I'm going to need you to just let me do that. Yeah, all right, fair enough. I'll keep those questions to myself. This is awkward enough as it is. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Right. Um, pushing something over, but nothing. Footsteps, dishes clattering. Again, I would always go to my pesky cat, but she'd never been in the same room we heard it in. Things were being moved or going missing. We started seeing weird shadows in corners, feeling something watching us, etc. We'd catch Janice chasing something that wasn't there, tracking it with pinpoint precision with her eyes, which has been very creepy. Wet spots of water where there was no source. Once we came home and the entire bed was soaked in water, but no cups, bottles, anything spilled close by. Then last night, as we were getting ready for bed, I was playing with Janice on the bed. Then we walked away to brush our teeth. When we came back, I could hear her meowing, but couldn't find her. I eventually found her locked in the closet, which had 100% been shut when we'd just seen her. Then, as we were falling asleep in the dark a short time later, my partner and I both heard it and felt it at the same time. A distant whisper in his ears. The whisper was in mine directly. Like I could feel the breath on my face. It said, shh, or psst. We both sat up right and screamed. I kept having dreams of it watching me while I slept all night. We're going to try and smudge and cast that spirit out tonight. Any advice would be appreciated. Well done, you. I thought you were giving yourself a round of applause at the end there. Why would you think that? I don't know. Are you in a, like a private carriage or is there like loads of people going, what the fuck is she doing? The latter. Amazing. This is wonderful. And you're with um, one of your colleagues, aren't you as well? Are they yes, looking at you yeah. like you've got 10 heads? Yes. Amazing. This is just the best thing they have had. Don't you ever tell me again I don't do nothing for this podcast. I know. This is fantastic. So go on then, Becca. Even better. Give us some advice on that. What should the person do? Well, I'm really glad as well that they made me read out both shh and <laughs> I didn't know quite what the noise was. Um, how do you not know if which was it? Why, why are they so confused about which it was? I don't know. I also don't know like how they know what a bag of bricks or a bag of potatoes sounds being dropped by a cat. I put to you that the sound of a bag of potatoes is quite different to the sound of bricks dropping. Yeah, I would agree with that, actually. Yeah, I would agree with that completely. Yeah. Um, I'm not into the fact that he calls the cat a pesky cat either. Yeah, I also think... Um, oh, cat. Oh, that's just been a cat. And also, I'm not being funny, if we came home and the neighbour's cat was sat on the bed and the bed was wet, I wouldn't be like, where's this strange water coming from? <laughs> what, what, look at this yellow water. <laughs> look, look, it's wet, it's wet, don't know why, don't know why. I know where I'd be looking. It's not me. <laughs> Becca's got this thing that I wee everywhere, I don't know. Anyway. Just... <laughs> <laughs> you do in more places than one. 
had moves moving swiftly on, Becca. <laughs> anyway, so um, thank you for taking part on your Reddit corner. You're welcome. It's a little bit of a shorter episode than usual because I'm very wobbly. Um, oh, and- I'm sorry. Is this inconvenient for you? <laughs> <laughs> for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it is. Yeah, it is. It actually is. Yeah. Um, but um, okay. Well, well done on on getting on a train. I know that can't have been easy without my help. And uh, <laughs> and I'll let you go. Enjoy your conference. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for um for putting yourself on the line. Like I'm not I'm not sure I would have even done that Becker on a pack train. So. You know, you know me, have ghost stories come first. Well, this is... <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Ever since you heard the Enfield Poltergeist, you've been all for this, haven't you? That's it, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thank you so- sincerely, Becca. That was very nice, yeah. You're welcome. Thank you for visiting Reddit Corner with Becca. Amazing. Tatty bye, my love. Tatty bye. Bye-bye. Well, isn't that nice of her? I, to be honest, I did not expect her to take part in that. I really didn't. Um, so I'm very impressed. Yeah, I mean, God bless her. She didn't have to do that. You know, she could have very... And I assumed she would just button me right away or say, don't be daft, I'm on a train, which would have been funny. But God bless her saying, no, yeah, all right, go on. Pack train, but if send me something, I'll read out a ghost story. I wouldn't do that. And I'm the bloody ghost person. The bloody ghost person. Excuse me, sir. I'm the bloody ghost person around here. So, yeah, there you go. So we are going to leave it there, guys. It's a little bit shorter by only by a couple of minutes, but I do need to go lie down <laughs> because... I noticed there that when someone else is talking and it's not me talking, I can't concentrate on anything and therefore my head starts spinning. So, however, of course, I still want to get you some ghosty stuff. And we did get a Becca's Reddit Corner in at the end. Who knew? Who knew that was even possible? So there you go. Okay, then, guys, I love you all very, very much. Very much. And hopefully next time I speak to you, the world will have stopped spinning. Not literally. We don't want the world to end. I mean, my world from my eyes, will stop spinning. In the meantime and in between time, you take care of yourselves and each other, as Jeremy Springer would say in the 90s. If you wish to, go and check out that film, The Devil's Doorway, because I thought it was rather good. Yes, indeed. And yeah, just look after each other and stay safe. I'm off for a big effing lie down. And why not? Tatty bye, everyone.